The Nike Pegasus 39's finally launched over in America, and I bet lots of you over there are wondering how it's going to hold up over the miles. At 160 kilometers, the Pegasus 39 has been a great daily shoe for me. So I'm going to furnish you with my views at this point on Nike's training shoe for every runner. Welcome back to the channel guys, thanks for tuning in, always appreciate it. Help us to reach a million subscribers by hitting that button, but also clicking the bell for notifications when we launch the new videos for you. It helps the channel out a huge amount too if you give this video a thumbs up like, but also share it with your running buddies. Danke schön. Nike's Pegasus model first released back in 1983 and it's been a staple in people's running shoe rotations since that time. I think it was dropped for maybe like a year or two but they had to bring it back because people complained. It was in fact one of the first running shoes that I ever owned. I loved my pair of the 1992s back in the day. I wore those shoes into the ground, literally there was nothing left of them. This year's model, thankfully, is something of a return to form for the Pegasus. A slightly lower weight here of 309 grams or 10.9 ounces in my UK size 11, US size 12. A React midsole and Zoom Air units in the 39. I've got about 35 millimeters of stack height here in the heel in my size and approximately 26 millimeters in the forefoot, making for a nine millimeter drop. That's after a hundred miles where I've, you know, hammered the shoe into the floor. I've been using these from training paces anywhere between about eight minutes 30 per mile through to about half marathon effort for me, which is about six minutes 50 per mile. I probably dropped a bit below that actually for some reps, like 200, 400 meters. They've taken in some longer runs, some shorter sessions, a real variable of terrains and different types of situations. With my reviews, I always start with the upper first. Otherwise, I've found the mesh to be very breathable and very accommodating. I've really enjoyed the roomy toe box in this year's version of the Pegasus. I haven't really noticed any flexing of the upper materials over the course of the miles. It's just been a nice consistent experience each time I've laced up. I've really enjoyed also the nice low profile in the collar and the heel area of the 39. Found the upper to be one actually that kind of disappears on foot as you get into your run. It's not at all noticeable really. It just doesn't become something you're worried about at all. A bit like a good sports referee, I suppose. I guess you could call this one the Pierre Luigi Colina of running shoes. Using a runner's knot was my preference with the 39 over the course of testing, and it was just an easy choice to sort of grab and go. You know you're gonna get consistent sort of performance out of it. To mention a Radiohead song here, it's just sort of no surprises with this shoe. It does what it says on the tin. A bit like Hammerite. Minimal padding, minimal overlays here in the upper. A nice tasty 2.8 out of 3 for the upper after 100 miles. The only thing I'd really change about it is just to make it look a bit more exciting. Yeah, I'm clutching at straws with that one, but you know, it's kind of basic, isn't it? Midsole, midsole, midsole now. Midsole wise, I've actually found the React formula here has softened up over time and it was actually a lot softer to start with out the box than the 38. There's a little bit of compression here on the side wall, certainly towards the heel. I have been running some slower daily miles in this one, so I'm not going to beat myself up about it. Interestingly, I found that most of the compression in the midsole is around the areas where those air units are. It seems as if the foam's just compressing a lot more around those when you think the foam midsole is actually carved out where those air units are. It kind of makes sense. As a daily use do-it-all kind of shoe, I found it hits the spot perfectly. It laps up those easy paced miles like a hungry kitten. And there's enough pop there from the air units for some faster paced sections if you want to do those. I think the React formula that Nike have finally got here in this version of the shoe is about right for what you want from the Pegasus. Not too firm, not too soft, somewhere in the middle. You know, you don't want it to be too firm so it's unforgiving and not a shoe that you want to grab, yet it just has enough sort of pop and response from it to run some faster pace reps. I don't want all my shoes to be super soft. You've got the invincible run for that, haven't you, if you want that level of squash and compression. It is nice to have some ground feel underfoot sometimes, especially if you're crossing into different terrains, if you're gonna do a little bit of light trail work in this shoe. I think with that in mind, the Pegasus 39 delivers in spades. 
much improved compared to the Pegasus 37 certainly and there's some noticeable cushion and improved softness in the midsole against the Pegasus 38. I think if you're a fan of the Pegasus 35 or 36 then you'll probably want to come back to this model it's got all the things that you'd probably want in fact it's very close to the Pegasus 36. That was a really good iteration of the shoe. I hope that in the future that Nike stick with the split air units. It really does work. I think they've got the balance just right with this one. I'm going to give it a 2.8 out of 3 after 100 miles for the midsole. Outsole now. Outsole wise we do have a little bit of wear in the midfoot area here and also the lateral heel. Now I don't know whether this is intentional but it's really easy to spot where the wear is because there seems to be some ground up rubber underneath the surface of the outsole. It's kind of like this white speckling all over the outsole as I've worn it down in certain areas it's very very prominent you can really see where you're actually hitting the floor perhaps where you're causing the most wear to the outsole. You can see it back there in the lateral side of the heel and again there in the midfoot section of the outsole. Not sure anyone's picked up on that yet but it's very very clear they've probably only gone around the cul-de-sac or whatever. There is more tearing and abrasion in this midfoot area here probably where I'm towing off it's just grinding down the outsole rubber a little bit more. The thing with this shoe is you really want to hit that midfoot airbag here it really does give you a nice little pop and sort of springing sensation. It's in areas that I would expect to see as a daily use kind of shoe. So nothing major there to worry me whatsoever. I've got to say grip has been very promising on gravel, mud, dirt, roads, pavements. It just works. I've had no issues slipping around anywhere. Always feels a very assured kind of ride in the Pegasus 39. I mean, you could even use it in some more light trail sections if you wanted to. It's quite a versatile shoe, I think. When I'm looking at the views of the Pegasus Trail 4, People still aren't happy with the outsole there. I can see this working out just fine. So not really entirely sure that we need a Pegasus Trail model. There's other trail shoes for that. It makes you wonder whether Nike's different departments actually work together and communicate. It does seem there's a lot of overlap and lots of shoes that just aren't really necessary. I guess some people would be really worried that there's some aesthetic wear in terms of the outsole at 100 miles, but there's still plenty of outsole left here. It's not like there's a servant scraping or something. And the midsole's just feeling better and better every mile I put into it, so I don't think it's a problem. Certainly the best outsole since the Pegasus 36. It's kind of like a mishmash, really, this outsole of the Invincible run and some of those Pegasus models from the past. I'm going to give it a 2.8 out of 3 after 100 miles for the outsole. Value-wise, I found this a really great shoe, and I think you will too. 110 Earth credits is the retail price, and I think that's very reasonable, really. Sort of smack bang in the middle of where a daily shoe should be. I think it delivers something for everybody as well. I think you could probably wear this casually as well if you wanted to. It's not too outlandish in terms of its looks. More along the lines of a Samba suede than a Saucony. I think the Pegasus, at least for my feet, supplies a really good balance between lots of different things that you might need. Comfort, fit, pace and versatility. Certainly a shoe I can recommend for running the bulk of your weekly miles in. Those easier efforts, the longer, slower runs. Perhaps if you need to do some faster paced tempo efforts as well, probably just about do it. Fit is a little bit more on point for me than the Velocity Nitro 2 from Puma. It's just a little bit wider, a little bit more accommodating. I haven't got a particularly narrow foot or anything, it's just a normal width foot. I still found the Puma to be a little bit tight. You could probably even run on grass with this shoe. I think the outsole's up to it, like trails are push as well. Perhaps not muddy trails, avoid those. I'm going to give it a 2.7 out of 3 for value after 100 miles. It's not a race shoe, it's just a good shoe. It's just on the money in terms of a daily shoe. I've enjoyed all my miles in it, I can't remember one I haven't. If I've totaled the scores up correctly, that gives us 11.1 out of 12 at 100 miles for the Nike Air Zoom Pegasus 39. Are you picking this up or have you already picked up this shoe, guys? Let me know your thoughts and opinions on it down in the comments. Bonus smell test. Neutral, 6 out of 10. It's musical interlude time. Oh, hang on. A new shoe has arrived, ready for testing. What do we have here? 
It is the Invincible Run too. Actually looks a lot better in hand, this color of the shoe. I was a little bit perplexed. It looked more red in the pictures. It's kind of more of a pink. Really pleased to have the Invincible Run back in the rotation with this second version. It was a bit of a love-hate relationship. I really missed it in the end, though those reflective pieces may have to go. I'll get out of these soon and let you know my thoughts. Incidentally, the laces on this version of the Invincible Run do appear to be the same ones that you get on Nike Dunk SB shoes, those much thicker sort of skateboarding laces, so musical interlude time. I dug back out my best of Chuck Berry CD recently. When the summer comes, you just want to put the windows of the car down and listen to Chuck. I've always been a real fan of the track Jaguar vs Thunderbird. Just simple stuff from Chuck Berry here, driving rhythms simple melodies and fantastic lyrics. Chuck Berry for me is one of the best lyricists of that rock and roll period. No one touches him really, the lyrics are just absolutely brilliant. I do like the immediacy of how they've recorded some of those early Chuck Berry tunes as well. Just sounds like everybody's in the same room all at once and they just try the track out a few times and see which one sounded best. Go and take a listen guys, you won't be disappointed. Jaguar vs Thunderbird by Chuck Berry. Thanks for tuning in people and sticking with me to the end of today's video. Always appreciated. Hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up like and also share it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Budd and I'll be seeing you.